Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, Sunday's feature race at Aqueduct is the eighth and final race on the card. We're going a one-turn mile, and it's the $100,000 Biagio's Rose Stakes for New York bred fillies and mares. You can bet the Biagio's Rose and the entire Aqueduct card with a DRF Bets account. Sign up at bets.drf.com, deposit $50, and bet with $200. Let's meet the field for the Biagio's Rose. Eight expected to travel the one-turn mile at Aqueduct. And really the key to this race, Mike, is analyzing the Bay Ridge Stakes on December the 30th, where Split Time beat four of these common rivals. And in watching that race, I think you and I disagree a little bit. Mm -hmm. I thought Split Time had a great situation where the rail opened up at the top of the stretch and Junior Alvarado shot on through while no hain, no gain was hung out three, four wide all the way around the track. And I think if you reverse the trips, right. you reverse the decision. Yeah, I don't agree. Um, you know, not that No Hay No Gain didn't run a good race in there because she did, and it was really nice to see her take a step forward um, in that race because she had been a little bit disappointed. It's almost like she lost her way. They dropped her into a restricted claiming race as a main track only to get a win, um, a, a long overdue one, and she's gone forward from there. Um, and she did run well because she carried a lot of ground. On the other hand, um, you know, split time. You know, when you describe the race, you make it sound like you know she just sat right in behind. It oh, opened no. up at the top, so she took over. The rail actually opened up for on the far turn. And she made a big run all the way around the second turn and already had the race taken over at the quarter pole. And then she held on to the finish. So, uh, you know, I think she actually ran better than it looks on paper. And I also feel like a mile and an eighth is a little bit too far for her. I know that she's run well around two turns uh, for most of uh, the last summer and, and late last year. I think she's better going shorter. And I think this turn back it just really helps her. I think we will agree that Junior gave her a very nice ride yeah. in that race because she was pulling pretty hard, it looked like, going yeah. into the first turn. And Junior got her down inside mm -hmm. where she was able to relax. Everything opened up and he took advantage and split time did the rest. I kind of agree. I like her turning back a little yeah. bit at a mile. Worth noting, though, that last race was over a wet track and she is undefeated yeah. three for three on wet going. As for no hain, no gain, we'll throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. They have no hain, no gain out there on the lead. I'm not sure that's going to be the case right. because Frosty and breaking from the rail kind of has to take advantage right. of that post. And also Frosty Margarita stretching out in distance right. has some speed as well. They are the one and seven respectively. So no hain, no gain I think is going to try to see a similar trip as she did last time out right. in that one turn mile against inferior horses where she sat off the rail and she won without any kind of an issue. Right. Maybe my problem with the Bay Ridge was that I needed her that day yeah. 33 to one she mic. Right there. She ran well. She got the win last time out. Um, this barn has been on just a tear. Yeah, the Aspen's Asp Asp barn, they're just crushing it at, at Aqueduct this winter. Um, and she's a big part of that. I mean, she's really turned her form around. I think you're right. I, I think she'll be up close in this race, Dan, but it just feels like there's going to be other horses going here. I think both both of Rudy's horses would go. I think Benita Bianca will be up close as well. Um, you know, I wouldn't say that, um, I wouldn't call it a fast pace. I don't think this pace is going to be fast. I be but fair. I wouldn't give pace horses the fair. advantage in a race like this either. I think it's going to be a fair, uh, fairly run race. And this horse's last three races make her a big contender here. I liked her last race, Dan. That was a pretty fast pace. That, they were going a good pace in that race, but it was really only her and out of orbit. Um, she was better than out of orbit in there, and there was nobody else in there. Once she took that race over coming to the stretch, there was nobody running behind those two horses. Do you buy that fig? Because uh, if you no, take I that don't. 88 buyer out of the equation, she's up against it. She kind yeah. of has to run that race right. back in order to beat these horses. I think it's a little bit a high. adjusted fig? I, it's, I think it's a little bit yeah. high. I think it might be the pace has something to do with it. I just feel like they might have just given out of orbit sort of the, the figure she always runs, mm -hmm. you know, in the mid-70s, um, and that makes this horse obviously a lot faster. I, I, I don't know if I believe the 88. Linda Wright has split time. She also has Midnight Disguise coming off of a long layoff. We have a formulator fact for both of these sources. Linda Rice over the past 90 days with four-year-olds and up, uh, last out winners on the dirt, 45% winners, 8 of 11 on the board, 349 ROI. Perhaps most importantly, Linda won this race with Holiday Disguise coming yeah. off of a win, off of a similar layoff as Midnight Disguise mm -hmm. is coming in. So I don't really worry about Linda coming off layoffs. No. So this horse did suffer a soft tissue injury after winning the Brewery on May the 28th. But I kind of like the fact that she had time because she was this big, giant yeah. filly that may have needed time to grow into herself. I kind of like her. I know she's done well in a mile. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing her stretch out. It'll be interesting to see what she does in here. I mean, in a lot of ways, she's the most interesting horse in the race because I I certainly most feel upside. like there, yeah, there's certainly a lot of upside. It's not like she did anything wrong in her races last year. And this is also the kind of race where I think you could look at the Bay Ridge and go, I don't know, I don't need any of those horses in here, really. This is the right new face in that regard. Her races are pretty much all good. She's a big, giant, long-striding horse, so it's going to be up to Manny Franco. If she's ready to go off the layoff, it's going to be up to him 
to get her into the clear to let her run because she's not the kind of horse you can put over behind a horse. Five Bonita Bianca could be another pace factor in this race. Yeah. Uh, she uh, sat just off when she won the Empire Distaff going a one-turn mile in a 16th. I really like that race here into big figure. They stepped her up against Marley's Freedom in the grade three go for one. She was overmatched. I really don't think yeah. she liked being inside in that race as well, pressing a couple of horses. But last time out in the Bay Ridge, maybe it was the mile in an eighth. Maybe that's what maybe. did her in, but I just didn't like the way she kind of spit it. Yeah, I mean, she was just bad. I don't think there's any way to really sugarcoat her performance last time. She just didn't run her best race for whatever reason, and I don't know what it is. Um, but it certainly makes it, you know, hard to really like her and this race or to come back to her. I think it's a little bit interesting because as good as she was in the Empire Distaff with the 91 buyer, she got a perfect trip in that race, but she also won for fun. It's interesting that when Jason Service took her over, he was sprinting her. Like, he wanted to go shorter with her. She gets back to a one-turn mile here. I guess it could help her, Dan. I just... I find it really hard to like her all that much off of her last race. Frosty Ann, uh, going into her most recent start, the Bay Ridge, was a mare that you and I discussed as, we wonder if she wanted to do it anymore. She yeah. just had a lot of problems going into the gate in her prior two starts. She did show speed in the Bay Ridge. She willingly gave up at 4-1 to one with the blinkers on. But this horse does have credentials. She's yeah. won 13 starts in her career. She had a very productive 2018, yeah, winning half of 12 starts. And if somehow Frosty Ann can get to the lead and they leave her alone, yeah. maybe Cutting back to a mile is what she wants. Yeah, that's where she's really dangerous, I guess, because she does have that speed and could potentially make the lead in here. And she's got plenty of races um, that would make her a contender. She's very versatile um, as far as distance goes, so you don't really worry about you know mile, mile length, whatever it is. She can run her race. It's just a question of whether you think she can uh, still run anymore. She won six races in a row last year, and then they gave her a little bit of a layoff, and she's come back. She's looking like a totally different horse. Conversely, I think Unbridled Adventure wants a little more ground. Yeah, I agree. Um, she ran okay in the Bay Ridge at a mile and an eighth, rallying a bit late. Her win in New York three starts back came at the mile and an eighth distance. And I think she's the kind of mare that's hoping for a little more hitting than that's Time right. Form US is projecting. Yeah, that, that pace projector does not, doesn't do her any favors at all. She's hoping for more than that. Um, really good form right now for Bruce Levine. She's won four of her last six dirt races, but she's a little slow for horses like this. She might be able to get a piece, though. She shows up every time. Frosty Marguerite has been solid for a very long time. She was a stakes winner as a two-year-old in 2015. Yep. She was a stakes winner last year. While she has won at the mile in the past, um, I wonder if seven is kind of her best yeah. distance. I think she's kind of on a mission here to go. I, I sort of felt the same way. And I know they're taking the blinkers off, but I still think they're going to try and make the lead with her here and see what happens. Her last four or five races, to say the least, yeah. have not been her best. Playing with the boys, the number seven is a lightly raced five-year-old, and it looks like she's in good form for Charlie yeah. Baker. She ran into one of the better New York <laughs> Reds on the grounds last time yeah, out, and Catherine the Wise, and she just wasn't beating that horse. But I did like the grit she showed two starts back, going six furlongs. And you know, she's one of the rare stretch outs. I think I like her at a mile. Yeah, she can get this far for sure. She can, and she can run her best race at this distance too. I don't know if I really feel like she's as good as some of the other horses in here, but boy, it's hard to knock her. She's run a lot of good races, and she's got figures that put her you know, very close to the best horses in this race. Pick time for the Biagio's Rose Stakes, the feature race at the Big A on Sunday. And you're going to go with split time right back off of that nice effort in the Bay Ridge. Listen, she has been solid throughout her yeah. entire career. And she's kind of tactical as well. I don't yeah. think she has to be 100 lengths out. I think all those things are true. And as we talked about before, I just like her going shorter. I know that they've been going longer with her uh, lately with some success, but I like her going shorter. Maybe it's more my heart than my head. I love no hay, no gain in the Bay Ridge. She was 33 to run. She gave me way more than a thrill. I thought she might have been best if the trips were reversed. She didn't do me any favors winning at 9 to 5 last yeah. time out in that optional claimer. But maybe she's the second choice or the third choice at the other maybe. Lindoff, the layoff gets bet. And I think she's going to work out at least an outside stalking trip. I'll give her one more try for the red hot Asmussen barn. Mike's going 2 3 8. I'm going 8 3 2 in the Biagio's Rose. Bet the Sunday card at Aqueduct with a DRF bets a count. Deposit 50, bet with 200. DRF bets ready, set, bet. Approximate post time for the Biagio's Rose, 4 33 Eastern on Sunday. Good luck.